Hey everybody, Doug Adler from the University of Utah here with this week's ASGE video tip of the week. Today we're going to be talking about celiac plexus block and celiac neurolysis. So celiac block is a procedure to produce temporary reduction in pain, usually in patients with chronic pancreatitis, whereas celiac neurolysis is a procedure to produce durable reduction in pain, usually in patients with pancreatic cancer or other malignancies. Both of these procedures involve injection of pharmaceuticals into or around the celiac ganglia. In about 70% of patients, you can identify the ganglia itself, but it's not critical to identify the ganglia itself to perform a celiac block or a neurolysis, and I've listed some other targets that can be used if you can't see the ganglia itself. With regards to agents, I typically like to use for celiac blocks bupivacaine followed by triamcinolone. Uh, with regards to neurolysis, I typically use bupivacaine first, followed by 98% alcohol. Some people like to use 100% alcohol. I don't think that there's any meaningful difference between the two. It's really up to the operator or what you have access to. With regards to needles, there's no clear needle size or type that's superior. You can use any FNA needle gauge size or the celiac plexus needle, which has side holes. Some pro tips, I like to adequately hydrate patients as they can get hypotensive after these procedures are done. I do use antibiotic prophylaxis with quinolones. Patients need to be well sedated. Before each injection, I like to aspirate to make sure I'm not in a blood vessel. And between each injection, I like to flush with three cc's of sterile saline to ensure that the needle lumen has been completely emptied. So here's a nice view of the celiac artery and SMA at their origin from the aorta. Uh, this is about as clean a view as you'll get, although notice you don't actually see the ganglia in this view, and like I said, you don't see the ganglia in every single person. This is a different patient showing the aorta with the celiac uh, takeoff, you can see coming in and out of view, and there's the ganglia that I'm putting my needle into right there, that's actually a pretty nice view of a ganglia, and there I've got my needle right in it. Again, you don't have to put your needle in the ganglia, but if you can, it's not a bad idea. Here's a different patient, again, showing a pretty clear view of the ganglia and the celiac artery takeoff. Uh, here's the needle again going into it. Uh, we published a study a couple years ago comparing intraneuronal and perineuronal injection, and we were actually quite surprised to see that it didn't, uh, didn't have a meaningful difference in outcome. So again, even though I'm showing that here in a couple of these videos, don't feel like you have to do that every time. Again, here you can see my needle's in good position. And now when I'm doing the injection, I've turned my Doppler window on. You can actually see the injectate coming out of the tip of the needle, uh, manifesting as a positive Doppler flow signal there. This is a different patient with chronic pancreatitis. So here I am looking at his pancreatic body and tail. You can see he's got coarse echogenic uh, parenchyma. It's very lobular. He's got some echogenic foci, and his pancreatic duct is fairly tortuous. Here's a look at the head of his pancreas that has uh, similar uh, EUS changes. That's the portal vein below the head of the pancreas there. This patient had quite significant pain, and we elected to do a celiac block. Here you can see the superior mesenteric artery, the celiac artery, and the aorta with the ganglia visible. And there you can see the ganglia quite nicely. in and out of view there as I roll my EUS transducer over it. So I've labeled it here CG for celiac ganglia. And again, here's my needle pass. You can see the needle tip there is pretty much inside the ganglia. Maybe just a little bit anterior to it, but pretty, pretty much a good shot. And there you see when I inject there's a little bit of loss of signal, and that can happen and be normal. So that pretty much wraps it up for this EUS uh, video tip of the week through the ASGE. And we'll be back soon with another video tip.